the subject of atomic physics lecture number 8 same magnetic dipole moments spin and transition rates lecture plan first the orbital magnetic dipole moments second the stern gerlach experiment and electron spin third the spin orbit interaction total angular momentum fourth spin orbit interaction energy and the hydrogen energy levels orbital magnetic dipole moments consider an electron of mass m and charge minus e moving with the velocity of magnitude v in a circular bore orbit of radius r as illustrated in figure 1 the charge circulating in a loop constitutes a current of magnitude I equals E divided T equals E multiplied V divided 2 multiplied P multiplied R. Formula number 1, where T is the orbital period of the electron whose charge has magnitude E. In elementary electromagnetic theory, it is shown that such a current loop produces a magnetic field which is the same at the large index distance from the loop as that on of the magnetic dipole located at the center of the loop and oriented perpendicular to its plane. For a current I in a loop of area A, the magnitude of the orbital magnetic dipole moment M sub L of the equivalent dipole is mu sub L equals I multiplied A. Formula number 2. And the direction of the magnetic dipole moment is perpendicular to the plane of the orbit in the sense indicated in figure 1. The figure shows the magnetic field produced by the current loop. It also indicates the two fixation, fixation poles of a dipole that would produce a magnetic field which becomes identical to the actual field far from the loop. The quantity mu sub L specifies the strength of the magnetic dipole. It equals the product of the, dip the pole strength times their separation. Because the electron has a negative charge, its magnetic dipole moment mu sub L in antiparallel to its orbital angular momentum L, whose magnetic magnitude is given by L equals M multiplied V multiplied R, formula number 3 and whose direction is illustrated in figure 1. Evaluating I from A from one formula and A for circular board orbit formula 2 wheels mu sub L equals I multiplied A equals E multiplied V multiplied R divided 2. Formula 4. Dividing by, by same formula, we obtain mu sub L divided L equals E divided 2 multiplied N. Formula 5. We see that the ratio of the magnetic mu sub L of the orbital magnetic dipole moment to the magnitude L of the orbital angular momentum for the electron is a combination of a universal constants. It is usual to write this ratio as mu sub L divided L equals G sub L multiplied mu sub B divided H bar formula 6, where mu sub B equals E multiplied H bar divided 2 multiplied M equals 0.9. 927 multiplied 10 to minus 23 power ampere multiplied m meter square formula 7 and g sub l equals 1 formula 8 the quantity mu sub b forms a natural unit for the measurement of atomic magnetic dipole moments and is called the Bohr magneton the quantity g sub l is called the orbital g factor
it is produced introduced even through in your pairs here to be redundant to preserve symmetry with equations we shall develop later in treating cases involving g factors which are not equal to 1. In terms of these quantities, we may rewrite 5 formula as a vector equation specifying both the magnitude of the mu sub L and its orientation relative to L. That is mu sub L equals minus g sub L multiplied mu sub B divided h bar multiplied L. Formula 9. The ratio of mu sub L to L does not depend on the size of the orbit or on the orbital frequency. By making a calculation similar to the one above of an elliptical orbit, it can be shown that the mu sub L divided L is independent of the shape of the orbit. That this ratio is completely independent of the details of the orbit sagas. Its value might not depend on the details of the mechanical theory used to evaluate it. And this is actually the case. Upon evaluation of mu sub L quantum mechanically, which cannot be done here because the electromagnetic theory required is too sophisticated, and dividing by the quantum mechanical expression L equals square root from L multiplied L plus 1 multiplied H bar, the ratio of mu sub L to L is found to have the same value that, that we have obtained. Granting this, we will accept that the correct quantum mechanical expressions for the magnitude of that component of the orbital magnetic dipole moment are Formula 10 and mu sub L sub Z equals minus G sub L multiplied mu sub B multiplied mu sub L formula 11. The minus sign in the last equation reflects the fact that the vector mu sub L is anti parallel to the vector L. In elementary electromagnetic theory, it is shown that the magnetic dipole, dipole of moment mu sub L, when it is placed in an applied magnetic field B, will experience to a torque tau equals mu sub L vector multiplied B vector formula, formula 12, tending to align the dipole with the field and that associated with the torque, there is a potential energy of orientation delta E equals minus mu sub L vector multiplied B vector. Formula 20, uh, 13. Example. Assume that the magnetic dipole whose moment is has magnitude mu sub L is aligned parallel to an external magnetic field whose strength has magnitude B. Take mu sub L equal 1, Bohr magneton, typical of the magnetic dipole moment of the atom, and B sub L sub 1 Tesla, typical for the field produced by a fairly powerful electromagnet. Calculate the energy required to turn the magnetic dipole so that it is aligned anti parallel to the field. According to formula 13, the orientational potential energy when the dipole is parallel to the field is minus mu sub L multiplied B and it, it is plus mu c when the dipole is anti-parallel to the field. So the energy that must be supplied to turn the dipole is 2 multiplied mu sub L multiplied B equals equals 1.85 multiplied 10 to minus 23 joule equals 1.116 multiplied 10 to minus 4 power electron volt. Also, this energy is very small, even by atomic standards. The dipole cannot turn unless it is supplied the energy. Conversely, if the dipole is originally aligned anti-parallel to the field, it cannot turn to align itself, itself parallel to the field unless it can get rid in the same amount of the energy. If there is no way for a system consisting of magnetic dipole moment mu sub L 
is the magnetic field B to dissipate energy, the orientational potential energy delta E of the system must remain constant. In this circumstance, mu sub L cannot align itself with B. Instead, mu sub L will process around B in such a way that the angle between these two vectors remains constant and that the magnitude of both vectors remain constant. The precession of motion is the consequence of the fact that the according to formula 9 and formula 12, the torque acting on the dipole is always perpendicular to its angular momentum. It complete analogy to the case of a spinning top. The precession of its explanation are illustrated in figure 2. It, it is easy to show see the figure caption that the magnitude of the angular frequency of precession of mu sub L about B is given by omega equals G sub L multiplied mu sub B divided H bar formula 14. This equation also indicates that the sense of the precession is in the direction of B. The phenomenon is known as a Larmor precession and to its called the Larmor frequency. Equation 14 is obtained from the classical treatment, but a quantum mechanical treatment leads to the same result in the sense that the expectation values of the components perpendicular to the magnetic field of a quantum mechanical magnetic dipole moment change cyclically in, in the time of the same way as due to the actual components perpendicular to the magnetic field of a classical magnetic dipole moment. To simplify the discussion of the subsequent sections, we sh shall frequently speak of the precession of the quantum mechanical magnetic dipole moment in the magnetic field. Also, to be strictly correct, we shall speak of the cyclic cyclic change in the expectation values of the its perpendicular components. If the applied magnetic field are uniform in space, there will be no net translational force acting on the magnetic dipole. Also, there is certainly a torque. But if the field of the non-uniform, there will be such a translation force in addition to the torque. That rarely happens is illustrated in figure 3. This figure shows that the electron moving with the velocity v through a circular orbit in a region of the which the v field is converging fields a force proportional to the minus V multiplied B that allows has a component in the direction in which the field becomes more intense. The effect can also be seen via the analogy between a fictitation magnetic dipole in a non-uniform magnetic field and an electric dipole in a non-uniform electric field as illustrated in figure 4. Using this analogy it is easy to show that the average force acting on the magnetic dipole is F vector F sub Z equals D B sub Z over DZ multiplied mu sub L sub X formula 15 where Z is the coordinate axis in the direction of the increase of the field strength and D B sub Z over dz is the rate of at which it, 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 in, it increases. We conclude that the magnetic dipole in a non-uniform magnetic field experiences a torque which will cause precession and a force which will causes, cause displacement. Stern Gerlach experiment and electron spin. In 1922, Stern and Gerlach measured the possible values of the magnetic dipole moment for silver atoms by sending a beam of these atoms through a un non-uniform magnetic field. A drawing of this apparatus is shown in figure 5. A beam of neutral atoms is formed by evaporating silver from an oven. The beam is collimated by a diaphragm and it enters a magnet. The cross-sectional view of the magnet shows that it produces a field that increases to intensity in the z-direction defined in the figure. 
which is also the direction of the magnetic field, it's in the region of the beam. As the atoms are neutral or literal, the only net force acting on them is the force F sub Z of 15 formula, which is proportional to mu sub L sub X. Since the force acting of each atom of the beam is proportional to its value of mu sub L sub X, each atom is deflected in passing through the magnetic field by an amount which is proportional to mu sub L sub X. Thus, the beam is an analyzed into component according to the various, value, various values of mu sub L sub X. The deflected atoms strike a metallic plate upon which they condense and leave a visible trace. In the orbital magnetic moment vector of the atom has a magnitude mu sub L sub X. Then is classical physics the Z component mu sub L sub X of this quantity can have any value from minus mu sub L to plus, min plus mu sub L. The reason is that classically the atom can have any orientation relative to that axis, and so this will also be true of its orbital angular momentum and its magnetic dipole moment. The predictions of quantum mechanics as summarized by L11 formula are that mu sub L sub X can have only the discretely quantized values mu sub L sub X equals mu minus G sub L multiplied mu sub B multiplied mu sub L formula 16A where mu sub L m sub L is one of the integers minus L minus L plus plus 1 etc. 16b. Thus, the classical prediction is that the deflected beam will be spread into a continuous band corresponding to a continuous distribution of values of mu sub L sub X from one atom to the next. The quantum mechanical predict prediction is that the deflected beam will be split into several discrete components. Furthermore, quantum mechanics predicts that this should happen for all orientations of analyzing magnet. That is, the magnet is essentially acting as a measurement device which investigates the continuization of the component of the magnetic dipole moment along a z-axis which, which it defines as the direction in which its field increases in intensity most rapidly. Since, according to the quantum mechanics, should be quantized for any choice of the z direction because L sub z is quantized for any choice of z direction. The same results should be obtained for all positions of the analyzing magnet. Stern and Gerlach found that the beam of the silver atoms is split into discrete components, one component being bent in the positive z direction and the other band in the negative z direction. Figure 6 shows the type of the pattern observed on the detecting plate. They also found that this result we obtained independent of the choice of the z direction. The experiment was repeated using several other species of atoms and each case, each case investigated it was found that the deflected beam is split in two or more discrete components. The results are qualitatively very di direct experimental proof of the quantization of the component of the magnetic dipole moments of atoms and therefore of the angular momenta. In other words, the experiments showed that the orientation of the space of atoms is quantized. The phenomenon is called spa space quantization. But the results of the stern gerlach experiment are not quantitatively in agreement with 16A and 16B formulas, the equations sum summarizing the predictions of the theory we have developed. According to these equations, the number of the possible values of J is equal to the number of the possible values of mu sub L sub X, which is 2 multiplied L plus 1. Since L is an integer, 
this L is an odd number. Also, for any value of L, one of the possible values of mu sub L sub X is zero. Thus, the fact that the beam of the silver atoms are in split into only two components, both of which are deflected, indicates either that there something is wrong with the Schrodinger theory of the atom, or that the theory is incomplete. The theory is not wrong, we shall see later, that atoms do have orbital angular momenta and magnetic dipole momenta with the predicted properties, but it stands the Schrodinger theory of the atom is incomplete. This, this is shown most clearly by an experimental performed in 1927 by Phillips and Taylor, who used the Stengerlach technique on a beam of hydrogen atoms. The experiment is particularly significant because the atoms contain a single electron, so the theory we have developed wakes and ambiguous predictions. Since the atoms in the beam are in their ground state because in the relatively low temperature of the oven, the theory predicts that the quantum number L has the value L equals zero. Then there is only one possible value of m sub l, namely m sub l equals zero, and we expect that the beam will be unaffected by the magnetic field since mu sub l sub x will be equal to zero. However, Phillips and Taylor found that the beam is split in two symmetrically deflected components, that there is certainly some magnetic dipole moments in the atom, which he have not his his to consider it. One possibility is magnetic dipole moment associated with motion of the charge in the nucleus. The magnitude of such a magnetic dipole moment will be on the order of E multiplied H bar multi divided to multiplied M, where M is the mass of the proton. But the magnetic dipole moment measured experimentally from the size of the splitting is the order of the mu sub B equals E multiplied h bar divided 2 multiplied m, where m is the mass of the electron, which is about 2000 times larger. Therefore, the nucleus cannot be responsible for the observed magnetic dipole moment. Its source must be the eject electron. This leads us to some reasonable assumptions, which were also supported by other evidence to be discussed shortly. We assume that the electron has an intrinsic built-in magnetic dipole moment mu sub s due to the fact that it has intrinsic angular momentum s called its spin. From a classical point of view, we can think at least crudely of the electron producing the external magnetic field of a magnetic dipole because of the current loops associated with its spinning charge. We also assume that the magnitude s and the zero component Z, S sub Z of the spin angular momentum are related to two quantum numbers S and M sub S by quantization relation which are identical to those for orbital angular momentum that is, is S equals root square root S multiplied, multiplied S plus 1 multiplied H bar 17 formula and s sub z equals m sub sub s multiplied h bar multiplied uh, formula 18. Note that s sub x and s sub y are not quantized and also in the case for l sub x and l sub y. We further assume that the relation between the spin magnetic dipole moment and the spin angular momentum is of the same form as the relation for the orbital case, that is mu sub s vector equals formula 19 and mu sub, sub z sub s sub z equals formula 20. The quantity g sub z is called the spin g factor. From the experimental observation that the beam of the hydrogen atoms is split in two symmetrical deflected components, 
it is apparent that the new subset sub x sub sub s sub z can assume just two values, which is are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. If we make the final assumption that the possible values of m sub m sub s differ for one and range from minus s to plus s as the true of the quantum numbers m sub l and l for orbital angular momentum, when we can conclude that the two possible values of m sub s are f sub m sub s equals minus one half plus one half only 21, and that s has the single value s equals one half only 22. By measuring the splitting of the beam by hydrogen atoms, it is possible to evaluate the net force F sub Z the field while traversing the magnetic field. From energy to 15 and from 20, this is F sub Z equals minus D B sub Z over D Z mu sub B sub B multiplied g sub s multiplied mu sub s since mu sub b is known and d b sub z over dz can be measured the experiment experiments determine the value of the quantity g sub z sub s multiplied m sub s within the accuracy it was found that the g sub s multiplied m sub s equals plus plus minus one. Since we have concluded that m sub s equals plus minus one half, this implies g sub s equals to formula 23. These conclusions are confirmed by many experiment, different experiments. For instance, in the Zeeman effect, a uniform external magnetic field is applied to a collection of atoms, and measurements are made of the potential energies of orientation in the field of the magnetic dipole moments of the atoms. As we shall discuss in detail later, th this is done by measuring, measuring by the splitting of the spectral line emitted when the atoms decay from the some higher energy level to the ground state energy level. The splitting of the line occurs because the levels them themselves are split according to the different values assumed by the orientational potential energy of the atoms. A simple example is the Zeeman effect for hydrogen atoms. In their ground state, these atoms have no orbital angular momentum and therefore no orbital magnetic, magnetic dipole moments. But the measurements show that their ground state energy level is split by the applied magnetic field in two components symmetrically disposed about the energy of the ground state in the absence of the field. This splitting reflects the two possible values of the orientational potential energy. Delta E equals plus, plus min minus D V sub S multiplied mu sub P multiplied B divided 2, where the Z axis is taken in the direction of the applied field. The fact that the level is symmetrically split in two components confirms the conclusion that m sub s equals plus minus one half and the measured magnitude of the splitting confirms the conclusion that g sub s equals two. Recent spectroscopic measurements of lamp using a technique of extreme accuracy actually have shown that the two. However, in almost all situations it is quite adequate to say simply that the spin g factor for an electron is twice as large as its orbital g factor. It as that the spin magnetic dipole moment is twice as large compared to the spin angular momentum as the orbital magnetic dipole moment is compared to the orbital angular momentum. On the other hand, mu sub s and s are antiparallel, just like mu l sub l and l because the relative orientation of each pair of vectors depends only on the fact that the electron has a negative charge.
Example 2. A beam of hydrogen atoms emitted from the oven running at a temperature equals 400 Kelvin degree is sent through a Stein-Gerlach magnet of length x equals 1 meter. The atom experiences a magnetic field with a gradient of 10 tesla per meter. Calculate the transverse, transverse deflection of the typical atom in each component of the beam. Do it as a force exerted on its spin magnetic dipole moment at the point where the beam leaves the magnet. At this temperature, the atoms are in the ground state and have no orbital angular momentum or orbital magnetic dipole moment. They typically have kinetic energy 2 multiplied k multiplied t where k is the Boltzmann constant. The kin kinetic theory shows that while the atoms in the oven typically have kinetic energy 3 divided 2 multiplied k multiplied t the atoms emitted in the beam typically have kinetic energy 2 multiplied k multiplied t. The reason is that the more energe energetic atoms hit the walls of the oven more frequently and thus have a higher probability of impinging on the hole of the wall through which a beam is emitted. From 15 and 1990, they experience a transverse force F sub z equals minus d b sub z over dz multiplied mu sub b multiplied g sub s multiplied m sub s. Since g sub s multiplied m sub s equals plus minus 1, this is e sub z equals plus minus d b sub z over dz multiplied mu sub b. The typical longitudinal velocity v sub x of an atom of mass m in traveling through the magnet can be evaluated by setting one half m multiplied v square sub x equals two multiplied k multiplied t. So v sub x equal square root from four multiplied k multiplied t divided m. Thus the time t the atom experiences the transverse force is tra traveling through the magnet of length x is t equals x divided v sub x equals x multiplied square root from m divided 4 multiplied k multiplied, multiplied, multiplied t. Because of the force they have a transverse acceleration a sub z equals f sub z divided m and so suffer a transverse deflection z equals one half multiplied a sub z multiplied t square equals plus minus 2.1 multiplied 10 to 3 power meta. The separation of the two components is about half a centimeter which is quite easily easy to observe. The idea of electron spin was introduced some time before the work of Phillips, Phipps and Taylor. In the final sentence of the research paper on the scattering of X-rays by atoms published in 1921, Compton had written, May I then conclude that the electron itself spinning like a tiny gyroscope is probably the ultimate magnetic particle. This also really more of the speculation that than a conclusion and Compton apparently never followed it further. Credit for the introduction of electron spin is generally given by Goodschmidt and Allen Beck in 1925. As graduate students, they, are, they were trying by, to understand why certain lines of the optical spectra of hydrogen and the alkali atoms are composite of the closely spaced pair of lines. This is the fine structure which had been created by Sommerfeld in terms of the Bohr model as due to a splitting of the atomic energy levels because of a small about one part in 10, 10 to 4 power contribution to the total energy resulting from the relativistic variation of the electron mass with velocity.
The results of Sommerfeld were in good numerical agreement with the observed fine structure of the hydrogen. But the simulation was not so satisfactory for the alkalis. In these atoms, the electron responsible for the optical spectrum will be expected to move in bore-like orbit in the large radius and low velocity, so the relativistic variation of mass will be expected to be small. However, the fine structure splitting was observed to be very much larger than the hydrogen. Consequently, doubt arose concerning the validity of Sommerfeld's explanation of the origin of the fine structure. In considering other possibilities, Goldschmidt and Uhlenbeck proposed that the electron has an intrinsic angular momentum and magnetic dipole moment, whose Z components are specified by a force quantum numbers m sub s, which can assume either of two values, minus one half and plus one half. The splitting of the atomic energy levels could be understood as due to the potential energy of the orientation of the magnetic dipole moment of the electron in the magnetic field that is present in the atom because it contain, contains moving charged particles. The energy of orientation will be either positive or negative depending on the sign of the m sub s. It is depending on, on whether the spin is up or down relative to the direction of the internal magnetic field of the atom. This should not be confused with the previously in maintained Zeeman effect, which involves the splitting of energy levels on the atom due to the orientational potential energy of the magnetic dipole moment in an external magnetic field applied to the atom. The most recent experimental evidence indicates that the electron is a point particle and is certainly not bigger than the whole atom. One set of the experiments studies the scattering of the electron by electrons at very high kinetic energies. If these objects had appreciable extent in space, in, in collisions which were so close that they overlap, the force acting between them then would be modified just as in the close collision of the alpha particle and ion nucleus. It was found that the Electrons always act like two point objects with charge minus E and magnetic dipole moment mu sub s even in the closest collisions investigated. Thus electrons have an extended length than the collision distance which is about. Also, the electron seems to be a point particle for quantum numbers and required to specify its quantum states. Schrodinger quantum mechanics is completely compatible with the existence of electron spin, but it does not predict it, so spin must be introduced as a separate postulate. The reason for this is that the theory is an approximation which ignores relativistic effects. Dirac developed the relativistic theory of quantum mechanics in 1929, using the same postulates as the Schrodinger theory but replacing the energy equation by its relativistic form E equals square root C square multiplied P square plus M sub zero square multiplied C four, square, four root plus V direct shows that the electron must have an intrinsic S equals one half angular momentum and intrinsic magnetic dipole moment with a g factor of two and all of the properties we have stated previously. This this was a great triumph for relative theory. It had electron spin of a theme theoretical foundation and shows that electron spin is intimately connected with relativity. A quantitative treatment of the direct theory would in Unfortunately, be beyond the level of this book, but the we shall another aspect of the non classical character of the spin can be seen by noting that the quantum number S, which specifies the magnitude of the spin angular momentum S, has a fixed value one half. Therefore, 
we cannot like take s to the classical limit by letting s trends to infinity for the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum l by letting its quantum number l trends to infinity an equivalent statement is not the classical limit the magnitude of s is completely nullable because h is so small so spin is essentially non classical this being the case it is something sometimes more harmful than the helpful to the thing of spin spin is terms of the classical model like a small spinning the sphere but it must must be admitted that it is difficult to avoid thinking in such terms spin orbit interaction since the internal magnetic field of an one atom electron atom is related to the electron's orbital angular momentum this is called the spin orbit interaction it is a relatively weak interaction which is responsible in part for the fine structure of the excited states of the one electron atoms the spin orbit interaction also occurs in multi electron atoms but in such atoms it is reasonably strong because the internal magnetic field are very strong furthermore an effect completely analogous to the spin orbit interactions occurs in nuclei the nuclear spin orbit interaction is so strong that it governs the periodic properties of nuclei the origin of the internal magnetic field experienced by an electron moving in the one electron atom is easy to understand if we consider the motion of the nucleus from the point of the view of the electron in a frame of reference fixed on the electron the charged nucleus moves around the electron and the electron is in effect located inside a current loop which produces produce the magnetic field the argument is illustrated cumulatively in figure 7 to make the argument quantitative we note that the char charged nucleus moving with velocity minus v constitutes a current element j where j equals minus z multiplied e multiplied v according to the ampere law this produces a magnetic field b which at the position of the electron is b vector equals minus z equals e multiplied m zeros multiplied v vector multiplied r vector divided for multiplied p multiplied r 3 power it is convenient to express the terms of the electric field a acting on the electron according to the coulomb laws e vector equals z multiplied e divided for multiplied p multiplied e zeros epsilon zeros multiplied r vector divided r cube from the last two equations we have d vector equals minus epsilon zeros mu zeros multiplied v vector multiplied e vector or b vector equals minus 1 divided c square multiplied v vector multiplied e vector formula 24 since c equals 1 divided square root from epsilon zeros multiplied mu zeros the quantity b is the magnetic field strength experienced by the electron when it is moving with the velocity v relative to the nucleus and the, therefore through the electric field of the strength e which the nucleus accepts on